born-again Christians as a group are not people of prayer, and most of them will admit it. But they're blind to what they're actually doing, the damage they're actually doing to themselves, most of all. Having had me follow him through the churches, so-called churches and Christian groups, the Lord showed me how few show up to the prayer meetings and that they're mostly focused on their own will, not God's will. And Christians' lack of interest in prayer is super foolish because combined with God's word, it's how we build up our relationship with him. And I'm not saying you need to go to a prayer meeting to be into prayer. I don't think that at all. I'm just saying, you know, that's part of one way to make the point that Christians are extremely unfaithful in prayer. Anyway, looking at the graphic, these are just some of the New Testament admonitions about prayer. Starting on the left top, going clockwise, pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Always pray and not give up. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Pray continually. Pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. Pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, not fight them or argue with them. When you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. So one of the clearest ways God has been revealing the body's super hard-hearted hearts to me and eventually to them is through prayer. When God called me to start holding Christians accountable in 1998, he also had me start praying for them with a craft and it had at least four purposes to help me making it easier for me to be faithful with that part of my calling. Two, to help me hide the word in my heart, which is what we need to do in order to be able to take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Three, to help me build up my relationship with him. And four, to convict them. But since their hearts are so hardened today, they haven't been convicted at all. Today's Christians seem to think prayer is either foolish or for someone else to do. Neil Anderson even has prayer listed as one of the spiritual gifts, like only some people are gifted in prayer. No, not according to scripture. At some point, born-again Christians will get hammered about it, especially those he's had me reach out to with a craft or with a letter or book and not just those he's had me reach out to but those he's had other more faithful servants reach out to and more recently in november of 2022 he showed me i was done with the crafts i've been sick of doing it for quite a while and had me start prayer walking reading through scripture on my tablet while out walking and recording my prayers, then making those recordings into videos for the prayer list, prayer walking for help. But it's slow going since there's so much work to do, like with this book and playlist he called me to write, reaching out to my sister-in-law. So I'm doing quite a few laps through the neighborhood before I reach out to her, especially considering that she's very pro-homosexuality I don't know how far deceived she is into the LGBT agenda. You know, is she pro-trans, pro-having children be brainwashed with this agenda? I hope not. I mean, if she is, I can't imagine she would even watch this playlist. God knows. Anyway, like I said, I'll be doing quite a few laps around town praying for her before reaching out to her. In John 17, Jesus prayed for all of his disciples 
not only concerning those of his day, but into the future. It's what scholars have called his high priestly prayer, since it was so important. Here's part of it. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. While Jesus is God and he prayed to the Father for the believers to be united as one, we've still divided by the tens of thousands. In other words, even biblical godly prayer guarantees nothing, at least not on our timing. Those prayed for still have to choose to be honest. God knows how bad it would be if there was no godly prayer involved. And in his timing, the Father will answer every faithful biblical prayer ever made, especially those of his sons. And as I've clearly explained on this playlist, becoming born again is just the first step of the genuine Christian life. He says, follow me, Luke 4.19. We need to earnestly seek him, become born again, then continue earnestly seeking him while obeying him, as I've been doing for decades. And no one but a faithful born-again Christian would pray God's word for people, not the lost and not a false prophet who's also lost, but that's what I would have to be. Born-again Christians know either I'm a true or false prophet. And if you're unwilling to listen to me, you're saying I'm a false prophet when it's so obvious I'm not. Obvious if you're honest. That's a no-brainer. But that's the problem. No one is honest today. I've never met anybody honest when it comes to God. Because again, we're living at the bottom of the barrel, having totally fulfilled the falling away from the truth which is the reason the world is in the state that it's in today. And God says, have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. You know that they breed quarrels, and the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil. And there could be nothing more foolish ignorant and evil than the trans agenda. This investigative journalist nails it, having followed the money. So I give you the link in the book that's in the video description box. The LGBT agenda reveals these people do not know their right hand from their left, quoting Jonah 411. And by these people, I ultimately mean all of us. We don't know what we're doing just like Jesus prayed for us on the cross. I mean, he was praying for those people during his day, but he was praying for all of us. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And with the exception of educating others, the best most are doing about it is like two bulls butting heads, which eventually becomes physically violent. In other words, they're doing exactly what Satan wants us to do. The only way any real positive change will take place, and a decent amount of it, is if God's elect get right with him through Christ by admitting that the evidence makes it clear that there is no other God, and that we've historically misunderstood the Bible, and pray for these people, and also do whatever he leads. But today's Christian mentality in general is to fight back and that there's nothing left to do but pray, revealing it's their last option when Jesus modeled that it's our first line of defense, having spent whole days and nights in prayer. According to Luke 6.12, God wants us to depend on him rather than on ourselves. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. 
Zechariah 4, 6. Eventually, God's elect are going to be echoing Proverbs 5, Lord willing, sooner rather than later. When your flesh and body are spent, when you're old and you've wasted your life away, you will say, how have I hated discipline? How my heart spurned correction. I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors. Proverbs 5, 11 to 13. And that's especially true for born-again Christians who refuse to be held accountable. So this is my prayer. Father, give them a new heart and a new spirit. Remove their hearts of stone. Ezekiel thirty-six twenty-six. And rock hard is exactly how most hearts are towards God today. Since because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most has grown cold as he prophesied it would in Matthew twenty four twelve, That's why rather than praying for their enemies as Jesus told us to do, today's Christians fight with them and ignore the fact that our struggle isn't with flesh and blood. It's not with people, but with the forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians six twelve. we're in a spiritual war with the fallen angels. That's our problem. And they also ignore the fact that all we have to do is submit to God ourselves, resist the devil, and the devil will have no choice but to flee. James 4, 7. But rather than have faith in God, just about everyone today has faith in themselves and their abilities, their arguments, their weapons, and woe to us all because of it.